Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome back to the world of home tech with me, your host, Paul Hibbert. Do you have old people? If you have old people, you are probably frightened that old people will hurt themselves. Uh, if that is the case, this is a set-top box specifically designed to sit between their uh, actual TV provider's set-top box and their television. And what it does is it allows you to get on their nerves and get your face in the way of their TV shows um, any time you like. You can basically set this box up to do one of two things. Either it will auto-answer a video call from you so that you can check in on them and make sure they're okay, so if they're suffering with senility and they're not able to actually just press a button, you can override and just make sure you're there whether they like it or not. Uh, or you can set it up if they're a bit more um, conscious, if they're a bit more cognitive, you can set it up so that they can answer your video call with a remote control. So this device has both functions. But it's not just for old people. Uh, this is a cool box for integrating your TV uh, and all things like Kodi and Netflix and all those cool things because it is so well put together that the interface will allow you to switch between all of those things, whether it's live TV coming through your actual set-top box, or whether it's Netflix, or whether it's Kodi, or whether it's Plex, all of them are together. Awesome! Let's check it out! Shantab! Step into our social little world! I will! Hi there! Hi there! That's a lot of information I won't read. Uh, what we got? This is... a protective case? It's not gonna be that shiny, surely? That's, that's like you get on mobile phones to protect a mobile phone screen. Let's find out, shall we? Oh! That's the shiniest Android box I've ever seen! Holy moly, it's shiny! Oh, Centab, it's pretty. Well done. So we got an antenna. We got a power button. That's satisfying to press. Uh, two speakers out if you're a baby. Um, there is a HDMI in. This is interesting. So the HDMI in, I'll talk about later on. OTG, I forget what that means. Uh, that is a card reader, which is cool. Uh, then we got a LAN port, uh, which I'll probably use instead of the Wi-Fi. Two USB ports. HDMI out, which is obviously necessary. An optical out, which I shall also be using. And a slot that doesn't do anything. Has all of those markings on the back for you safety conscious maniacs that like to bash me in the comments for not being safety conscious enough. HDMI. Power supply. Wi-Fi antenna. A remote control. Let's we'll see what the remote control looks like. Let's go to these little orange tabs. I love these things. I don't know why I love these things, but I do. They kind of make me feel even more childish than I am in real life. Uh, then we've got some very basic looking buttons, which is great because that's all we need. I think this remote will scratch easy. I will be honest and give this a fair review. I don't think this remote will last, but I like the way it looks right now. A Logitech camera, which it comes with for no additional fee, which is great because this is the thing that does all the clever stuff that we're going to talk about right now. So we're going to go on a voyage of discovery together, and I'm just going to switch it on and see what it looks like. Um, I never switched it on before. I thought I would do so on camera in case it is exciting. Okay. First things first. Oh my goodness. Thank you for your interest, and we promise to do our very Look at this guy. He's cool. I like the very deep American voice. <laughs> He's looking at me like, did you see that? <laughs> Stop looking at me like that. Set <laughs> tab. <laughs> Wowzers. So that's kind of insane. That is um, that is the most impressive intro I think I've ever seen to an Android box, and I'm glad I watched it, because that dude was absolutely wonderful. Um, I need to log into a Sensab account, so I'm guessing I need to set one up on my mobile phone first. I think all of the devices are kind of interconnected in this interconnected world we live in. So I'm going to connect my mobile phone up to a uh, Sensab, and then I'm going to get a Sensab account, and then I'm going to log in. So what works really well about this device? First of all, the interface is extremely pretty. Uh, I like the way it looks, it's very simplistic, it's certainly going to be easy for an elderly relative to use if that's your plan for it, but I quite like the look of it as a young person, uh, so I would quite happily use it myself. Uh, the interface is beautiful. Uh, the next thing is the uh, applications designed to help you with your elderly relatives, such as the calling features, are beautiful. Uh, again, they work really 
really well. All you do is you sign up to a Sensab account yourself and sign them up with a Sensab account and you both log in on your phone or on your tablet or whatever it is you want to do and then you add each other as friends as if it was Facebook or something, which it definitely isn't because old people don't like Facebook. Uh, but this will be set up by you for them and then you can call your friend or, or in fact your elderly relative in this case uh, and they will be interrupted as I mentioned before. The inbuilt TV functionality is great in that you can go to it from a menu and feel like you're in the same environment and it be overlaid with Android notifications and uh, with phone calls where necessary. Um, it is a brilliant middleman and it will take pride of place in my living room. Um, I love it. What I don't like and is a bit of a shame is you need to still use your uh, wow. set top boxes remote. So once you go into TV, you then need to pick up your set top box remote. Unless, of course, you have a universal remote, like I do. <sighs> Sorry, I just need to interrupt for one second. Earlier, Paul had a good idea as to how this box worked but he trusted the remote a little bit too much. Once he put Centab in place and then tried to use the remote, he found it epically painful. Um, so he started using the Harmony remote full time. Um, I would recommend that you take this into consideration because these things are quite expensive. Any universal remote will work, and I'm talking now in July 2018. Um, I would probably recommend checking in the description because what I will do is once Centab release a better remote, which they almost certainly will do, I'm going to write that in the description was down there. So make sure you read the description right now because the remote might be fixed. As of July 2018, the remote is terrible and you're going to want to replace it with something like this. I'll uh, I'll let you have him back now, hang on. So if you have a universal remote, you can just program your universal remote up to control the Centab box for up, down, left, right and whatever, uh, but use the numerical keypad buttons to change channels and do all those cool things. So you can use a universal remote in place of having two remotes if you're quite clever, and I happen to be quite clever. <laughs> There is no native Alexa or Google Home support, which is a bit of a shame um, because that's kind of what most of my channel is about. But you can, of course, get that stuff working using a Broadlink RM Pro, uh, or, if you're, or if you're a big spender, the kind of guy who likes to spend a lot of money, then a Harmony Hub will do exactly the same thing. Um, I have used my Broadlink RM Pro to successfully control this device and the set-top box, and therefore I can use Alexa voice commands and routines, uh, or in fact do the same thing with Google Home to control both devices and get it to do a number of things. So I can say watch live TV and have it take me straight into the TV guide if I want. Um, of course the remote will do the same thing if I'm using a Harmony remote, which I do also have. Therefore I have the best of both worlds and it all works great, but you will need those additional devices if you want to control it with those things. There are four important things to me to work here, and they all work. So Kodi works, straight off the bat, didn't have to do anything to make that work. Although I did replace it with the uh, latest layer version to check it worked, and it does, so that's all good. Uh, Plex, because I'm kind of thinking of sort of maybe moving to Plex now. Uh, Plex is working great, I got it set up in literally a minute, because Plex is awesome. Uh, Moonlight works, so I can stream my NVIDIA games. I managed to plug my control pad in, and straight away everything was doing what it needed to do. Uh, and finally, Netflix. Netflix doesn't work straight off the bat. I couldn't find it in the Play Store. The Play Store seems to be like a cut down version for some reason, which is a bit of a shame. Uh, but all I did was I sideloaded Google Chrome and then searched for Netflix APK, found it on Google Play, and magically, Google Play could then find it. Uh, so it doesn't work. Netflix. Um, Bear with me, that sounds odd considering I just said Netflix does work. The reason is that Netflix for proper Android TV does not work. That means that your remote's control is not complete. You can't quite do uh, things like pause and resume. You can use back and that will pause the video anyway, so it actually does everything I need it to do, but proper Netflix isn't there in play. The same is true of Amazon Prime, only worse. Uh, Amazon Prime does not work at all. I've tried everything. I found an APK from Reddit that was uh, purported to have been exported. Purported to have been exported. That's clever language. Uh, from the Nvidia Shield, um, and everyone was saying how great it worked on another device. It doesn't work here. There is no way to get Amazon Prime to work because Amazon wants all of your money, uh, and you couldn't possibly be using their services on someone else's box, could we? Voice control works great. 
As long as there's a pop-up box to say speak now, please. Uh, what doesn't work great is me saying, OK, Google, I can say it on blue in the face and nothing will happen. And that's a shame because I'd like to be able to say, OK, Google, open Cody or OK, Google, open Plex. Now, I do have an answer for that, at least for Alexa, but that's for another video. For this, I would like to have seen some native support for doing that and currently it is not present. Uh, I've contacted the guys at Centab, they're awesome by the way, I should probably point that out because that's a massive tick, is they're a wicked bunch of support staff. Uh, but they're saying unfortunately right now it's just on a roadmap, it's not here yet. So voice control is kind of there, but not quite. This box is not cheap. Um, it is $149, I'm not going to make any bones about it, but that comes with a webcam, so it's the box and the webcam, so it's not actually that bad when you consider all of the things it does. Uh, so it's Wi-Fi antenna, is very powerful, uh, it's a very strong box, I've not found it slow down at any point. It has uh, the ability to connect you to your live TV through your set-top box. Uh, and again, you can check in on your elderly relatives. This thing is very much geared towards looking after them olds people. Uh, so, do I recommend this box? If you want to look after an elderly relative, 100% definitely. Um, if you're just looking for an Android box for yourself that can connect you through to your TV, again, probably. Um, I really like this box and I will definitely be keeping it and definitely using it. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you have, please give it a thumbs up. If you want to see some more of this guy, hit that subscribe button. And if you want to help support my channel, there are links in the description to do that too. I'll see you next time. Look after the elderly people on your behalf. That's not true. That's not what it does. <laughs> You're terrified of what's going to happen to them, and so the idea is, I'm blathering on again. <laughs> Things that work really well are the, um... As long as the voice control 